Look at that. What's happening? A new series of lecture is here. Say goodbye to those old days of hematology. Now we're gonna talk about fluid and electrolytes, acid-based disturbance, only with medicosis. So thank you so much for watching this video and let's jump into it. A few weeks ago, we voted on the subject that you guys wanted to see next and the winner was acid base and the second place was infectious diseases. A channel with tens of thousands of subscribers, but only few people vote. Houston, we have a problem. Right now, a new playlist is created and the title is acid base fluids and electrolyte disturbance. We're going to talk about the pH. How about acidosis, alkalosis, hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, hypernatremia, all of this crazy stuff, osmolality, osmolarity, osmosis, osmotic pressure, alkaline reserve, anion gap, osmolar gap, etc, etc, etc. So these are the sections, not the videos that we're gonna talk about. First, we'll start with the basics. What are the fluids, the cell, ECF, ISF, and yes, the kidney physiology. I know some students go crazy with kidney physiology. It's actually very easy if explained properly, which is very rare. Electrolyte overview. We'll learn about sodium, about calcium, about magnesium, etc. Fluid disturbance, hypervolemia, hypovolemia, and how the kidney handles those. IV solutions, because again, students go bananas with normal saline, hypertonic saline, hypotonic saline, D5W, free water, um, what else, um, D5, normal saline, etc. So we'll explain all of this crazy stuff. Electrolyte disturbance, hyponatremia, hypernatremia, hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypermagnesemia. Acid-based disturbance, metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis. Step-by-step -step approach for acid-based problems, how to solve respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, metabolic um, alkalosis. And of course, there are two types of metabolic acidosis, the high anion gap metabolic acidosis and the normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. We're going to explain all of this and how to solve the problems with multiple disorders, because sometimes you can have high anion gap metabolic acidosis together with respiratory acidosis and respiratory or metabolic alkalosis, all three in the same patient simultaneously. Yes, it can happen. And I'll tell you how to figure it out. Miscellaneous medical conditions that affect the acid base, such as CHF, diabetic ketoacidosis, diabetes insipidus, SIADH. We're going to talk about all of this. And last cases to make sure that you understand everything in this series. Guys, it's going to be awesome. Not only will I do like your professors and just give you some information to memorize. No, 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 no. We take it to the next level. I'll tell you how to be a good clinician. When you pinch the skin of the patient, what do you expect? Capillary refill, ankle edema. These are not just signs. They are very specific. They can help you so much with your diagnosis. Also, you'll have questions and answers and summaries. So these videos that you're watching right now are not everything I create. I actually create five different things beside videos. I create post notes, which are just like the postcard with some mnemonics or with some information that are written in an organized way. For example, what are the substances that increase the a smaller gap. What are the substances that increase the anion gap? What are the substances that increase both? Something like that. Audio notes and art notes, which are articles with a twist. Because if you read a textbook, it's very boring. Okay, there is no like it's not funny, and it's written in a like a crude scientific way. But not my notes. My article notes are awesome. They have mnemonics. We you're just like talking together on a cup of coffee. Video notes are the illustrations that I draw for the video. So when you watch the video, you see my handwriting and you see the notes that I'm drawing. These are my illustrated notes or video notes. 
And last thing is the ebook, one book for every subject. So we are done with hematology. I'm gonna write an ebook about hematology and it's gonna have all of you need. It has illustrations, it has um, written notes, it has mnemonics, questions, everything. How can we get access to all of these notes? They are on Patreon. You go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis and on the lower left side there is a title called feature tags and you will find video notes, post notes, audio notes and art notes. So because you guys are awesome I'll give you the first five art notes for free. Just see the link below in the description and you will find a script or like an article about the subject of today's video. Did you know that now you can go to my Patreon page, click on video notes and choose hematology for example. You will see all of my hematology notes. There are like 150 of them. You can download them, print them, view them, do whatever you want. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. If you are familiar with my videos, you know that I explain everything. I'm not bound by any of these subjects. I'm like a free spirit. I go to through all of them. So, for example, the subject of fluids and electrolytes and acid base is like included in physiology, biochemistry, all of them. So, first you learn in physiology and then you become indoctrinated about the difference between osmolality and osmolarity and that they are not the same. Okay, yeah, they are not the same, but this is nonsense. Then the biochemistry professor comes in, destroying you with his buffer systems and buffering you against those systems. Then the pathologist comes, kicking the door and telling you that Life isn't that pink and rosy. There is lots of pain and suffering in the world. And there is such a thing called a science of disease called pathology. Then the pharmacology professor enters into the picture and makes you forget all of you that you have learned in physiology. Then the internal medicine guy or gal comes in and then teach you like all of you that you have learned before is useless because now you cannot treat the patient yet. So these informations are useless until you apply it in the real life. Then in surgery, the surgeon comes in and informs you about how he treats acidosis in the emergency room because all of the internal medicine doctors are idiots. The pediatrician comes and, and tells you about the horror and the ugly face of the infant dehydration and electrolyte imbalance in kids. And as they say in New York, it's complicated. So don't listen too much to these people because now there is Medicosis Perfectionalis. We will tie it together and give you a tasty, easy to digest meal of information to your plate. We make sense of all of it. I use the Socratic method. What is the Socratic method? Socrates told you questions and answers. Questions and answers. It's called cooperative argumentative dialogue. You ask questions and then answers. This is the best way to learn. I agree. Thank you, Uncle Socrates. Then always be skeptic. If you learn from um, your professor, don't take it as a given. Always think, why is that? Why is that? Be skeptic. And as Rene Descartes told us, I doubt, therefore I am. Thank you, Monsieur Rene Descartes, but don't doubt too much because if you doubt the fact that you're doubting, then it's doubtful that you are actually doubting about your doubting. There is no doubt about it. Ha ha ha. Philosophy, I love you, but you give me mental constipation. Those guys had lots of free time. They didn't have Facebook back in the day. So let me tell you a fun story to teach you how to stay focused. So Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson decided to go on a camping trip. After dinner, they lay down for the night. Everything is nice and cozy. Holmes asked his faithful friend, let's do it in a British accent. Watson, look up the sky and tell me what you see. Watson replied, I see millions of stars. What does that tell you? Watson pondered for a minute and then said, Astronomically, it tells me that there are millions of galaxies and potentially billions of planets. 
Astrologically, I observe that Saturn is in Leo. Horologically, I deduce that the time is approximately a quarter past three. Theologically, I can see that God is all-powerful and that we are small and insignificant. Meteorologically, I suspect that we will have a beautiful day tomorrow. Now it's your turn, Holmes. What does it tell you? Holmes was silent for a minute, then spoke. Watson, ye idiot, someone has stolen our tent. Ha ha ha. It's a joke, but you have to focus. Don't be over skeptic and focus on the teeny tiny details. No, focus on the big picture. Don't be like Dr. Watson and remember, don't be super sophisticated. Focus on the big picture. Also, an Egyptian should never try to do a charming British accent like ever. And one last thing, the series of lectures on acid-based disturbance requires you to do without your stupidity for a short period of time. Once we are done with this subject and then go to another easy subject like infectious diseases, you can claim your stupidity back. Quick disclaimer, when I joke in these videos, it's just to make learning easier. I'm not insulting you, I'm not making fun of patients. Please, when it has emotions, you remember it better. And now, let's get started. So, every membrane in your body is actually a double membrane with an intermembrane space. Like, look at this, double membrane, lipid bilayer with an intermembrane space. It's like Hinduism. Hinduism teaches us that every life is an afterlife, every birth is a rebirth. Medicine teaches us that every membrane is a double membrane. I'm not making fun of Hinduism, I'm just making learning easier. Nothing but respect for every religion. Proteins penetrate the lipid bilayer. This is lipid, but there is protein penetrating the whole length. We call them channel proteins. The protein can be a channel like this or a carrier. There is a rule in chemistry called like dissolves like. If you are lipid soluble, by definition you are nonpolar because you are not soluble in water, and then you can pass freely through the lipid membrane itself. Okay, you have an easy life. However, if you are water-soluble or polar or lipid-insoluble, you cannot pass through this lipid bilayer membrane. You only pass through water. So, that's why if you're water-soluble, you have to pass through a channel. Give me a channel or give me death, said any water-soluble molecules. There is no difference between molecules and ions when we are talking in medicine generally. Yeah, in chemistry there is a huge difference, but again, we are doctors, we are not chemists. Okay, we actually do useful stuff. Just kidding. Also, don't forget, protein is the active form of anything. So, if you are active, you're using protein. If you are active, you are made of protein. So, a channel is active, yes, it opens and closes. So, it's made of protein. A carrier is active. It carries like a molecule and diffuse or like go move to through the membrane or through it, whatever. So it's active, it's protein. The cell is the living unit of your body and it will perform bodily functions. So it needs lots of active stuff. That's why proteins in the cell are more abundant than proteins outside of the cell. Protein active. Any active form is protein. This slide is amazing. It's gonna save you lots of time and energy. Okay, let's start. Membrane transport. It's either passive or active. What do you mean by passive? I do not need ATP, but here is a very important thing. When I say it passive, it doesn't require energy. I mean, it doesn't require extra energy because in nature, we have only two facts, energy and matter. There is no such thing as it doesn't require energy at all. This is BS. It requires energy. It's that normal kinetic energy. If you're moving, there is kinetic energy, kiddo. Okay, 
So when I say passive, it doesn't require extra energy to the baseline of kinetic energy. I will give you an example. Let's say that I stopped paying my electricity bill. Then the company will turn the switch off. And now I have no lights. I cannot upload any awesome videos like I'm doing right now. So still, I'm surrounded by electromagnetic waves. Still, light travels in a straight line. But when I go back and pay my bills, the company is going to supply and provide electricity to my house so that I can power my iPhone and iPad and whatever. Now, this requires extra energy on top of the electromagnetic energy, which is the light. And now I have to pay. I'm a good citizen. I pay my bills so that I can upload this medicosis video. Okay, so passive, no extra energy, which means no ATP. Active, on the other hand, it requires ATP. Very cool. Passive, the movement is along the electrochemical gradient. What does electrochemical mean? Electro means electrical, chemical means like chemical, like concentration. So let's say that I have more substances here and less substance here. And here is a membrane. Okay, the direction of movement will be from here to here, from the higher concentration to the lower concentration. It's called diffusion. I didn't need ATP, so it's passive. It's along the gradient from high to low, so it's passive. Okay, this is chemical gradient. What about electrical gradient? Let's say that everything here is positive. Okay. And here is a negative ion. This negative ion is going to be attracted towards the positive. Okay, this is electrical gradient. So if everything here is negative, and here are few negatives, the gradient is going to be this way, this way. Very cool. There are three types of diffusion. Simple diffusion, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion. By the way, shocker, osmosis is a subtype of simple diffusion. Oh, are you kidding? Nobody has told me that before. Yes, it's a subtype. So let's define simple diffusion. It's the movement of a substance from high concentration to low concentration. Let's define osmosis. Osmosis is a simple diffusion for water. Osmosis is the movement of water from high concentration of water to low concentration of water. Yes, indeed, it's as simple as that. Yes, your book will say from low concentration of solutes to high concentration of solids is the same thing. They are just confusing you so that you can they can earn lots of money from you. Okay. Facilitated diffusion needs a carrier. Simple doesn't need any carrier. So let's discuss more about that simple diffusion. It can be either through a membrane or through channel. So if you are lipid soluble, you can go through the lipid bilayer membrane because like dissolves like. So gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, they are lipid soluble, they can go through the membrane itself. But if you are water soluble, you can go through channels. But to go through the channels, you have to be small. What if I'm big and water soluble? This is facilitated diffusion. Wait, kiddo. Okay, two types of channel. They can be gated, which means they have gates or non-gated. Two types of gates, ligand gated or voltage gated. Ligand gated, they open by chemistry. Voltage gated, they open by electricity. How convenient. Ligand gated are two things. By ligand, I mean like an antigen, not an antigen like something that binds to a receptor. So if this is the receptor, whatever is going to bind to the receptor, I'm going to call it ligand. Two types of ligand, internal ligand, such as the cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is in the cell, starts the cascade of reaction in the cell because the channel is inside of the cell. On the other hand, hormones are floating in the bloodstream. They are outside of the cell until the hormones comes and binds to its receptor on the outside of the cell. And now everything is hunky-dory. You have to be small to pass through channels. You have to be water-soluble like sodium to pass through channels. 
Or, if you are water, you're king. You get to rule. You can choose whatever path. You can pass through the lipid membrane, yes indeed, but it's very slow. Or you can go through gates, and this is fast. We call the gates of water, look at that, aqua porin. Now let's break this down. I-N means protein. Pore means, it's a pore, it's an opening. Aqua means water. Very nice. Why does water gets to rule because it's small and it's uncharged. Let's go to facilitated diffusion. Facilitated why? It needs a carrier. You have to be large and water soluble. Having a carrier will give you three advantages. What are the three advantages? Number one, structural specificity. Okay, it's like a key and a lock. You have to be a certain molecule in order to fit into the certain carrier or the certain receptor. This is called structural specificity. For instance, glucose transporters. Glucose transporters will transport glucose, nothing else. It's called structural specificity. I've talked about the different types of glutes in previous videos, so make sure to watch these first. Question, how many glutes are they in, their in your body? The answer is about 13. Personally, I only know five, but that's fine. I try to focus on what's important and leave the others aside. I try not to be Dr. Watson. Second thing that the carrier will give you, second advantage is competition. What is competition? So competition is when you have two molecules, they look the same, and this carrier can accept either one. So they have to compete with each other in order, in order to see which one is going to fit on this carrier. This is called competition. For instance, sulfa drug is competitively inhibitor of other stuff. So these kids who are spoiled and they are living in their mother's basement collecting participation trophies because they don't believe in competition, this is BS. Life is competition. But this is not fair. This means that one of these molecules is going to bind to the carrier before the other. Yes, life is not fair. Deal with it. Third, saturation or Vmax. What is Vmax? You have a limited number of carriers. So when they are all saturated, the velocity is not going to increase anymore. So the curve is not like going upward like in towards infinity no it peaks it has a ceiling and this ceiling is called vmax why is that because of the saturation because we need a carrier very nice let's go to the second type and the second type is the active transport so active means needs atp two types of that carrier or vesicular. The carrier could be primary active or secondary active. So what's the difference? I have two analogies. First, imagine that you are a strong guy, okay, and you are on top of a mountain, and then your friend is fainting. So you're helping him, you're pushing him upwards against the gradient. You are using ATP, he's not using ATP. Yes, he needs energy to get up, but he's not exerting the energy himself. You are. We call you primary active transport. We call him secondary active transport. So primary needs ATP and exerts energy. Secondary needs ATP, but doesn't exert energy by itself. Between primary and secondary, there is a carrier with ATP's activity. Another analogy is the train, the first car or the first whatever is the primary active it exerts energy itself the second one is the secondary active they are going against the gradient and there is a carrier with atp atp's activity in between because active transport requires atp second type of active transport is the vesicular endocytosis and exocytosis mnemonic endo into the cell exo exit the cell very convenient Carrier ha can have three different types. Uniport, when you're trying to move one molecule in one direction. It's called uniport. So this is the carrier and you're moving one molecule this. It's called the uniport. Symport is when you have a carrier, you're moving two molecules in the same direction. Symport, such as the word symmetric. 
Sem means the same. Or antiport. Antiport is when you have carrier, you're moving two molecules in two different directions. Now, quiz time. I have two questions for you. Number one, how many types of ATPase pump in your body that you know? I'll give you one. Sodium potassium ATPase. The question is, what else? What other ATPases are there in your body? Second question is match. Match from here to here. I have four different scenarios for you. One, two, three, and four. One of them, or like, I don't know, a number of them is simple diffusion or facilitated or osmosis, primary active transport or secondary active transport. Here is the cell. Here is another cell. Here is outside of the cell. And here is space in between the cells. Try to answer these. Let me know the answers down below in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. I'll answer these questions in the next video. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd like to see you on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. Did you know that now you can go to my Patreon page, click on video notes and choose hematology for example. You will see all of my hematology notes. There are like 150 of them. You can download them, print them, view them, do whatever you want. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicos.